Question number 24 says, an individual has high cholesterol, and in this particular individual's blood, the cholesterol level is 242 milligrams in 100 milliliters. Now, let's think about that for a second. What it's just told me is that this person has, in this person's blood, he's got 242 milligrams of cholesterol in 100 milliliters. What type of unit does that sound like? I've got a weight and a volume. What is that? Yeah, that is density. That's a density of this guy's cholesterol. And I have no idea if that's a high level of cholesterol or not. If we had one of our nursing professors here, we'd probably find out. This guy's cholesterol. But it's, it's 242 milligrams in 100 milliliters. All right, so now the question is telling me, if I've got 5.2 liters of this guy's blood, which I think is a good amount of blood, I probably wouldn't want to give that much blood up if I were this person. But anyway, how many grams, grams of cholesterol would be in there? So anyway, this, it tells me this problem, this guy has 242 milligrams and 100 milliliters of his blood. That is a density, because it's a weight and a volume. It's a density. That's a density of cholesterol in this guy's blood. And then it asks me, if I had 5.2 liters of this guy's blood, which is all the blood in his body, how many grams of cholesterol would be in it? And that is the magic question. All right. So there's this sort of general policy that I almost always follow when I'm doing a unit conversion. And that policy is this. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time, I try to start with the value that has no denominator units. Now looking at this problem, it says 242 milligrams in 100 milliliters of blood. I've told you that's density. What's the only unit left? Yeah, the volume of his blood, 5.2 liters. So what I'm saying is if you guys start with that, that's usually where I start. And now, I try to figure, where am I trying to go? It says, how many grams of cholesterol does the person's body contain? So my final answer should have what kind of units? Grams. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 5.2 liters. And I have to do some stuff. And I want to end up with grams. I have no idea where it's going to go in between. No clue. I just know that I need to take this 5.2 liters and do some stuff to eventually get the grams. So how in the world do I do this? The answer is by going through the magical, repetitive, monotonous steps that we do in dimensional analysis. Step one, after I have a starting point, which is almost always the thing that has no denominator units, I put brackets with a line. And now, I'm not going to put numbers in there. I am just going to ask you guys, what units do you think are going to go in the denominator? Liters. Now, why did you pick liters, Adrian? Why did you pick that? Because I want to cancel out the liters up here. So you see how that's kind of logically what we go. If we have no clue what we're doing, we can at least kind of pick the next denominator units to be the units that I've got for C. We okay to that? Okay, now keep in mind that what I have up here is I've got something that's given to me in milligrams per milliliter. So I've got liters in the denominator, but now I have to come up with something to put in the numerator. What do you guys think I can put in the numerator that will directly relate to liters? Milliliters. Can I directly relate milliliters to liters? Okay, I can. Okay, so that cancels out my units. Once again, I'm not putting in any numbers yet. But you'll notice milliliters isn't what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, I have to get the grams, so what I'm going to do is I put another set of parentheses. Now, let me ask you guys, what units am I going to put in the denominator? Yeah, so I've got milliliters up here, right? So what am I going to put down here? Milliliters, because I want to cancel out milliliters. Okay, now, what in the world can I put in the numerator up there? Milligrams. Why did you say that we should put milligrams on top? Where, where did you get that crazy idea, which happens to be totally right? That's your density conversion. So you're saying for this particular problem, I do have a way of relating milliliters to milligrams. Yep. For this guy's blood. You're dang right I do. That's why you did it. Did 
you know that's why you did it? Yeah, you did. All right. Okay. So my milliliters are canceling each other out. I'm at milligrams. Is that what I'm trying to get? No. No, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting closer. Now, Bergen City, anyone who wants to answer this question? Well, obviously, I'm, I'm going to have to do is put another set of parentheses because I'm not to grams yet. Tell me what units I'm going to put in the denominator here. Milligrams. Milligrams, excellent. And tell me what units I'm going to put in the numerator. Grams. Grams. Now, is there a way to directly relate milligrams and grams? Yes, sir. So we'll go ahead and have it. So now, what I've done is I've successfully converted my units, liters, all the way to grams. And this indeed leaves me. Now all I have to do is fill in the stuff with numbers. So pick one of these sets that you like and give me some numbers to put in the holes. Sorry, there we go. All right, uh, we're going to have uh, one gram on top and a thousand milligrams on the bottom. All right, now Ryan, are you sure you put those in the right place? Yeah, because you're multiplying by one. You're multiplying it by one. Those are the right place. I just wanted to test you. <laughs> but I always, step, I always put the numbers and then I step back and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mike. Did I put the numbers in the right place? Here's a gram. You know, I mean, it's something I can hold. And here's a milligram. It's really, really tiny. Does it make sense that there's, there's a thousand of these tiny, tiny, tiny milligrams in one gram? Does that make sense? Okay, did I put the, did Ryan put the numbers in the right place then? Okay, now you see, if Ryan made the mistake that sometimes students do, Ryan didn't, but sometimes students do, of putting a thousand on the top and one on the bottom. See what I'm saying? Here's a gram that I can hold, and here's a big gram, which is very, very tiny. Does it make sense there are a thousand of these and one of these? Well, it doesn't make sense, does it? So that's the reason why I counsel you guys. Put nothing but units going all the way through, and then when you start putting in numbers, write down one set of numbers at a time, and every time you do it, step back and make sure you put the numbers in the right place. Is that okay? You don't want to put these in the opposite order, or else you will get it wrong. Tell, give me another set of numbers to plug into some holes, whichever ones you like. I think that we should put our, because we got to go back to our 242 milligrams. Okay. 100 milliliters. Or so, the second one is what he's talking so you know, about. No, I'm, I'm saying we're, whichever numbers you want to put in. We've still got numbers to put in here and here. You can pick whichever of those two you want. Um, okay, well, we've got 242 milligrams. Okay. So 242 milligrams on top and on bottom, where do I put? 100. Okay. Now, we put that there. Are those numbers in the correct place? Yes. Yes, they are. This guy's blood. Well, so does this blood indeed have 242 milligrams in 100 milliliters? Yeah. Yes, it does. So you're totally right. All right. What numbers do we put in this last hole? It is 1,000 milliliters over one liter. Okay, good. Now, are you sure you put those in the right place? Yes. Okay, good. Now all we have to do is times this junk through. You'll notice that the thousands cancel each other out. So what I'm doing is taking 5.2 times away 242 divided by 100. And the number that I get is, I don't know. Someone tell me. 12.584. We, of course, want to select the right number of uh, significant figures. I'll go ahead and write down 12.584. This is a multiplication problem. The guy who has the smallest number of significant figures is this one, 5.2. So I'm going to do 12 points, uh, I guess 12. I guess 13, I think. 13 grams would be the correct number of significant figures. This guy's 5.2 liters of blood contain uh, 13 grams of cholesterol. That's an amount of cholesterol you can hold in your hand, rub on your face. It's, that's a pretty good. Yeah, this, I just recorded this. Yep. Was that fun? Good. What does the last problem look like? Is it hard? Yeah. So question number 25. Uh, okay, so it gives me a density of air as being 1.19 grams in one liter. Okay? And then it says it's mass in kilograms. So mass in kilograms is what I want to know in a room that measures... 14.5 feet by 16.5 feet by 8 feet. Okay? 
So I have to first of all convert this to a volume. To a volume. Now, if you take 13.5 feet times 16.5 feet times 8 feet and multiply those all together, you end up with cubic feet, which is indeed a unit of volume. And the number that you get, according to, uh, well, according to what I have written right here, is 1914 cubic feet. That's a volume of a room. This is the value that we have that has no denominator units. So in my typical strategy, like I said, most of the time, we start with the one that has no denominator units. So I want to have 1914 cubic feet, and I want to do something to that to eventually get to something in kilograms. Right? So, we're going to set, we're going to write some units here. Units in the denominator are going to be what? Cubic feet, even if I have no clue. Now you'll notice, I was given some stuff up here, liters and grams. Is there any way, like what in the world of units am I going to put on the top? Is there any way I can relate cubic feet to one of these units up here? Liter is a measurement of volume. Liters, exactly. Cubic feet is a measure of volume, and liters is a measurement of volume. So I can put liters on top. Now, these cubic feet cancel each other out. Am I to kilograms yet? No, so I have to put another set of parentheses. What am I going to put in the basement? Liters. Now, what in the world can I put on top? Do I have any way of relating liters to something else? It gets me closer. To grams, can I relate liters and grams directly? No. For this problem? Based on, I, based on I your can, density there. Because I'm getting the density of the thing in question. It's, it's in grams of, or in units. It's in units of grams per liter, so I totally can. Okay, so the liters cancel each other out. We got grams. Am I to kilograms yet? No. No, so I have to put another set of parentheses. In the basement, I'm going to put grams. What am I going to put on top? Kilograms. Now, can I? Can you guys fill in the numbers? I think you can. This one might not be in your book, but you can look that up. What is the uh, numerical ratio of cubic feet to liters? Uh, for this problem, I've got 1.19 grams in one liter, and I'm pretty sure there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. Now it's just plug and chug. Alright. I'll let you guys do that. Thank you all for joining us. I think that we're going to be cut off in probably a couple of minutes. So.